Another edition of the Pre-American Hour. I'm your host, I am Clay Douglas. And I've been accused by the ADL, Southern Poverty Law, of helping to start the militias around the country. They tell you that because they want you to believe, they want you to, well, they try to make it sound like I'm some kind of a terrorist because I put uh, this ad in the first Free American magazine, newspaper at that time, and I got to tell you, I'll never sue them for libel because they were absolutely correct. What part of the Second Amendment didn't they understand? And they just don't tell you that I did it in the governor's office and the governor of New Mexico at that time. Ah, uh, barely claimed. Internet connection problems. All right. We were... <laughs> Hey, it's starting in on us early today. Starting in on us early. We'll try to get that back here in just a heartbeat. The, uh, Since it appears you're calling back into the live show, we are reconnecting you now. Alright, we're trying to get uh, Rick back up. Mailbox for 
Volume 2, 8, 3. And this is interesting. We got connected. A mailbox belonging to H3. Interesting, folks. I don't know quite what to tell you on this, but uh, let's uh, let's keep trying here. Trying it on two different phones here. This is pretty incredible here. The mailbox belonging to eight. It won't connect on anything. Rick Light's phone is absolutely blocked. Two, eight, three, zero, five, nine, one, three. Well, they threatened to do something to my site today. And obviously they have done that. This is pretty interesting. Folks, my website, there we go. Hello, Rick. Did I get you? Yeah, I did. Barely, sir. It's, uh... All about. It's, uh... I, I've tried to call you back on two different lines three or four times. I, I get a voicemail if I try to call you on my cell phone, and I get blocked on the uh, internet on Skype if I try to get you. I don't oh boy, yeah, I was trying to call you back, and it kept trying to say that, well, I needed to retry it, but the call failed. Funny thing is, I've got four bars of uh, reception. Uh, it just seems kind of funny some of our stuff gets played with sometimes. This is Homeland Security. This is the whole... Jew run Homeland Security. You know, they at the beginning when we rolled FEMA into uh, Homeland Security, the Mossad demanded an office in it. And I said, wow, they, they just gave them the whole thing. And I think they're setting us up and we're fast approaching the same situation after the Bolsheviks took over Russia, where they killed 60 million white Russians, and it was a capable offense. That's not capable. That's capable. They put a gun to your head and pulled the trigger if you mentioned that uh, Marx and Lenin were Jewish. Uh, well, uh, we got a little news for them. I don't think it's going to be that easy for them to... Uh completely overthrow America. Granted, they've done a good job up till now of uh, subverting our way of life here in America, but there has been a great awakening, uh, especially since, well, um, November 6th when the election took off, and, well, a lot of people are starting to realize that, well, their voting has been basically, or the deck has been stacked on the voting. In other words, well, they're only going to give us the choices that they deem we should have uh, so they can keep an agenda of, uh, going on with the destruction of America. The good news is, as well, there's a lot of Americans waking up. And we're uh, telling them that their Second Amendment is key to this. Uh, the Second Amendment is about our militia rights. So repeat this hour. I'm going to quote the Second Amendment real quick here so everybody understands. Uh, I think any of us out there that ask most people what your Second Amendment means to them, they come back with, well, it's the right to keep and bear arms. My reply to that is, as well, you're only partially right. You're accepting the weak version of what your Second Amendment truly means to you. And let's 
go ahead and let's quote it in case, you know, some of our listeners out there do, do not understand the full Second Amendment and what it means. It says, a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, has a comma there. So let's stop there, because that comma's there. That's a statement telling you people that you have the right to be in a well-regulated militia because it's necessary to keep your state free, keep you free. That's not a right given to the National Guard, folks. That's a right given to you. That's why it's in your first ten of the Bill of Rights. That is your key. That is your security to your liberty and your freedom. Now it goes on to say, the rights of the people, or the rights to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, the reason why they put that in there is because a militia is useless to defend freedom and liberty, folks, unless they're armed. And I mean armed to the teeth. So, there you go. Uh, if anybody doubts what I'm saying, it's real easy to Google the Second Amendment. And if you look through what you've got on your Google, you'll see where our founders clearly told you, me, and everybody else that's born in the United States, that's free citizens, that we have a right to be in a well-regulated militia because it is necessary to keeping and maintaining our freedom and our liberty. Of course, when we did this, uh, back in 1994, I started the Free American Magazine and the militias, and as I said earlier, I did it in the governor's office. Wasn't exactly a, a, a terrorist organization that they tried to make it out like until Oklahoma City, uh, the Fenton de Mura building was brought down, and that was brought down just pretty much like the World Trade Towers, World Trade Center, and for the same reason, because they had this anti-terror bill sitting around gathering dust, and they wanted to uh, update it, and of course uh, now we got the Patriot Act, which is, uh, you know, just enhanced, right? Uh, yes, uh, very and much so. By the way, the uh, of let me let liberty. me let me point out. Let me point out that the B A T F had offices in that building, and not one of the B A T F officers was in that building. One of them was standing across the street saying, "Well, it's a." Uh, it's a good thing I, I, I went down to White Sands Missile Range and, exper and we experimented with these truck bombs and these info bombs because I was able to call Dallas and tell him what kind of uh, what kind of what had happened there, what kind of uh, bomb that was set off, and not one of them was in the building, not one of them was in Judea. And that's the same group, by the way, folks that murdered the uh, 17 little children and their parents at uh, Waco and are responsible for the murder of Brian Terry, uh, the Border Patrol agent that was shot with the guns of BATF gave to the Mexicans, to, gave to the drug cartels. Have I said anything that's not true there? Well, um, I tend to agree with your theory on that, um, Clayton, but let's say just for argument's sake that the Oklahoma incident was, well, really a terrorist attack. Um, the key players involved with that, none of them were involved with a militia group. Not one of them. They tried to get involved with militia groups, but they were always denied because they had some really... Uh, radical ways of thinking. They were for an attack on uh, a federal building. So either way you go, it had nothing to do with the militias. However, the militias were tagged on it. Um, that was a tactic to get the militias, well, to disband. The sad part is, is many of them did. Uh, that's the fact. I was in the militia at the time that happened. I didn't cave down to the pressure. We kept on uh, doing what we always did. We kept focused on things. Look, folks, if you're going to join a militia, there's three basic principles that we're adopting. Those principles are professionalism. That's first and foremost. In other words, if you join a militia, we want you to start acting like a professional. We expect your demeanor to be professional in everything you do. Second thing is safe uh, unit structures. 
the safe unit structure speaks for itself. If you've got the professionalism in with your safe unit structures, which means you're communicating with your sheriff in your county, and you are uh, productively putting a militia unit together, then you're going to win the hearts of your community. Uh, they're going to learn to trust you. Uh, the third part of that is, is being part of the community security. Look, folks, if you put the militias together right and you put them together uh, constructively, not destructively, I know we got some militias out there that kind of like to stay hit under the table. Well, nobody can force you to come out, you know, on top and, and uh, do the things that I'm suggesting. That's entirely your choice. But on the other hand, let's look at this logically. The militia, if the militia is partially to blame for its uh, its uh, failure to meet these three goals. Look, folks, you're not going to be able to bring the militia units back by screaming war. You're not going to do it. It's been done for 23 years that I've been in the movement, and it's failed miserably. The only thing that people are doing by running around on the Internet and running around in public screaming war and nonsense is running people away from the cause. Look, and, folks, as of November 6th, you have a large awakening out there. Now, there was a lot of party patriots that thought that Mr. Romney was going to save the day. I got news for those folks. Mr. Romney was not going to save the day. Uh, as hateful as it is that Barack Obama has been placed back into the presidency, it actually has a good spot for our patriots out there. Look, folks, you can't be party patriots no more. The days of party patriotism's over. No more saying hoorah for the Republicans. No more saying hoorah for the Democrats. We all know that both sides of that fence are corrupt as hell. They're corrupt as hell. That's just the way it is. They stack the deck on you. They lie to you repeatedly. Look how many of the politicians out there uh, stood up on your patriotism and screamed bayonets and, and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And as soon as they got into D.C., folks, what did they do? They repassed the Patriot Act. They took and they, they uh, voted on NDAA. Now, if that didn't tell folks something, I don't know what's going on there. And it's time that Americans shake off being party patriots. No more party patriotism, folks. You're either a patriot of freedom and liberty in this nation, or you're not a patriot. That's the way it is. I hate to hurt anybody's feelings out there that's listening. I'm sure there's some people going, well, screw you, Mr. Light. Well, my answer to them is, is well, if you're going to keep playing the party patriot game, you're just adding and you're helping these two parties destroy your country. Well, let me, let me, you, you have, you have touched on one of my little pet peeves and one of my rants here. The, because we spent, if you're a, a Democrat, your Democratic Party spent about six hundred million dollars on advertising. The uh, Republican Party Center spent about four hundred million dollars. That's a billion dollars that you gave, you people out there, gave to your parties to get your people elected, and every one of those people, with one or two exceptions, sold you out to the international bankers whom they work for. And all of that money, that billion dollars, went to our biggest enemy here. They don't call it program, television programming for nothing. They went to, they gave that money to advertise their candidates, and Mitt Romney, his, he ran Clear Channel, Bain Capital ran Clear Channel. Those were foreign agents working for communists, Jewish, whatever you want to call them, traitors to America, dual citizens, the same people that are running Homeland Security. They gave, they gave that a billion dollars to who? Oh, the media companies. And now that's a, that's a pet peeve here, folks. And and almost as much as when we elected Barack Obama uh, as as 
George Bush walked out the door, he handed two trillion dollars to those same bankers that printed the money and loaned it to them. We had to pay interest on the two trillion that they gave back to the people that printed the money. I mean, come on, folks. Why can't you uh, see what is happening here? They are draining you of your capital. They've destroyed our farmers. Now they're going after the veterans and trying to make them out. Well, uh, there, you know, those militia guys could, 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 uh, 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 they, they, they could recruit those veterans. So we got to watch the veterans now, too. Well, I'll tell you why a veteran joins the militia, why so many of them do. Uh, they took an oath to defend this nation. As I did when I was 17 all years against old. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Yes. And they go act, and they're only doing what the government has told them to do. They kept their word by their contract. It is not a soldier's fault that they got to go over and fight these wars. We got to start putting the blame where the blame lies. It's Washington, D.C.'s fault, and it's the United Nations' fault. If everybody wants to get mad at somebody, I think, well, it's high time to get mad at those two entities. Everybody knows that, well, this uh, administration here just dearly loves the United Nations and is trying to bring the United Nations in more and more into our lives. That's the U.N. gun ban treaty we see coming up. Look, folks, you guys need to call your representatives and your senators. I know a lot of people are like, well, Mr. Light, we've called them and called them. That's tough. We're going to have to still keep calling them, folks. We're going to have to hang to it. You need to tell those senators and those representatives flat out that if they do this to you, that if they try to take away your rights to bear arms in any way, shape, or form, where they can have a business if they care to build it, uh, if they want to be a farmer, they can be a productive farmer. It's time for us to rise to the to the calling, folks. You got a calling going on to you right now. Your country is in the balance of demise, economically, politically, and everything else. Uh, that's the secession thing we're seeing going on, um, folks. I would say sign those secession papers. I know that some people are going around saying, "Well, the White House is just taking names and numbers," folks. If you look at the numbers of the signatures on those papers, there is no way they're going to come after those kind of people. The only thing they will do is get their butts handed to them. They will wake America up even further. So don't be afraid, folks. Now's the time for you to state what's on your mind. Do them secession papers have any, well, real uh, value as far as the state seceding? No, they don't. I'm going to tell you that right now. Secession is a state ordeal. You have to secede by getting your state legislators to secede, not Washington, D.C. The reason why I ask people to sign those things is simple. You're telling them you have had enough, you're mad as hell, and you're not going to take it anymore. Now, it's time that patriots rise to the occasion. You need to find out what keeps America free, folks. It's not the politicians. The politicians have nothing to do with your freedom and liberty. Quit thinking that some savior is going to come out of the political structure. It's not. It's damned. It's doomed. It's corrupt. It's up to you. Every ear that hears my words needs to go look in the mirror because that's what's going to save this nation is you. Are you willing to stand with dignity, with honor, with integrity, and stand upon the moral principles of which this nation was built. Are you going to do that? Because if you do, we will win this nation back. We will clean the corruption up. I want to also point out that not every law enforcement agent out there is against you, folks. Our military, bless their hearts, I do not believe that Hardly any of them would ever attack the American people. I don't I, believe that. I don't I've believe got a lot they will. Contacts, and I'm telling folks, our military is just as bent as we are. Why do you think Barack Obama is getting rid of some of those uh, officers in the Navy and such right now, folks? Ask yourself that question. I'll tell you why he's getting rid of them. He's getting rid of them because they're patriotic to you, to me. He wants to get them out of there so he can put the junk in there that 
doesn't care about you or me, that's going to follow him blindly into anything he wants them to do. So look, folks, just because these gentlemen are fired, don't think they're out of the fight. That's not the case. They're not. Please honor our law enforcement agents out there. Show them the dignity and courtesy they deserve. And, hey, also our military, you guys better start reaching out to some of these people real quick and finding out where their heart's at. Because that's how you're going to be able to identify whether a law enforcement agent is against you or with you. And let me tell you, folks, you'll be pleasantly surprised to see that most of them are with you. So what do we do here about this? Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, what do we do? Communicate, folks. Get involved with your militias. Uh, the militias are really starting to bend the trend right now. Like I said, they're, they're going to start building upon the three principles that I have mentioned earlier, the professionalism, the safe unit structure, and being part of the community security of, of the areas they live. Now, I want you to think of the power that harnesses. We need support. We need things. We need to 